I'm here today with Nick Warren. We're going to talk to him a little bit about his uh, recent tour. So uh, who were you on tour with, Nick? Uh, this time, when I tried the Adamson, it was with a pop band called The Saturdays, who are your kind of average five girls, band, lots of hard disc, uh, usual kind of pop stuff, really. Not a rock and roll act, a pop act rather than a rock and roll act. So, yeah, yeah definite yeah. pop vibe to it rather than a rock thing. Yeah, and that was that was a, the tour was in uh, just in the UK, right? Yeah, basic different kind of arenas from small five thousand up to eighteen. Manchester Arena was the biggest one we did, which was eighteen thousand. Yeah. Uh, they'd sold some of them were half sold, some of them were a good real mix of venues to be honest. So we had some big there was some big throws for it to do, and there was also uh, gigs where I was working less than thirty feet away from the PA. So a, a good a good trial really of, of different ways of using it to be honest so uh, what do you what would you say are the sort of the key highlights that you found in the in the system uh basically vocal definition is stunning it's the most in your face vocal i've heard since jay uh but not only that band wise because of the 15s in the cabinet it's probably one of the best band sounds i've had out of a pa ever and also another bonus of it we didn't have time due to constraints of sets, video, those kind of things, to, to mess about EQing the PA for hours. So it was pretty much out of the box, turned on every day, not hours of tuning, and every night we got a great result. One of the one of the things that both uh, uh, Snake from uh, Duran Duran and Pooch from Lincoln Park had, had talked about was the definition in the low mid as well, the 15-inch definition in the bass guitar. And yeah, you, that's, I, think, yeah. I think that's what I was hearing. I was hearing those kind of things, like you say, bass guitar definition, great kick drum definition. Uh, but not only that, uh, keyboards and guitars, that kind of area of the mix, I just, yeah. it was all right in front of me. Yeah, rather yeah. than feeling like the vocal was maybe there and the band was distant, everything was right in your face. And what I also found amazing about it, in rehearsals, uh, I normally have a, I'll run the PA once for an hour in a, in the day. For the rest of the day, I'll go on small monitors due to ear fatigue. Don't want to be listening on big speakers all day. Yeah. Uh, didn't take my little monitors for some whatever reason. So I, he's like, well, I'm going to have to have the PA on all day. That's going to be fun. Uh, so I was listening to the Adamson at gig level for maybe six to eight hours a day. And what I noticed was the complete lack of ear fatigue, even though it sounded awesomely loud and deafening yeah. there was no ear fatigue with it or anything which is i found amazing because normally after three or four hours with the pa on you've had enough you mixed the last roxy music tour didn't you i did yes and yeah. and do you know what yes i'm sat here thinking i wish i'd tried this pa six months earlier yeah, yeah. i'd love to do a roxy music through it or brian ferry one of those kind of big band mixes what i also found incredible was the low end out of the system yeah uh so normally on an arena tour with, say, for instance, Jay or Vidos, we'll use six double 18 subs a side. So that's 12 double 18 subs in arenas. Yeah. Uh, we got to Manchester Arena and we put two a side in, four. Yeah. Yeah. And <laughs> that was just, I think, to, to, to make me feel better about having some in there, to be honest. <laughs> but it, what's nice is it's a very nice, usually sub out the air is something that's uncontrollable and usually not what you want to hear. Yeah. Uh, not the case with the Adamson at all. It sounds fantastic. And again, pulling it out, you know, normally you, you're pushing those kind of things. You're like, T yeah. stop it. The, we need less. Yeah. So we always had a roll off from about 100 because, again, it was just, just ridiculous. Enough, yeah. But again, I said it was a pop show for 15 year old kids, Jesse. Yeah. It wasn't a, a rock band. But yeah, next Roxy Music Tour, we'll be having Adamson. Towards the end of this tour, you guys switched PAs and you moved over, back over to a 12-inch system. How did you feel about the difference when you went from, from our system back to another rig? Uh, it was possibly the biggest eye-opener of my uh, career to date because J was the system we went back to, which d &B have had for years, uh, have a lot of history with, I've used a lot. I used on Roxy uh, from Wigwam. And we basically turned up, put the PA up, switched it on, it sounded okay. I did the show and it sounded like a different band playing. I'd lost all. I could still get a good vocal sound, very similar. I could still get that still in your face vocal sound. I couldn't get the band to sit at all. Yeah. Yeah. And, I, and I wasn't hearing. I was missing all. 
I was going to mix the things I couldn't hear, whereas with the Adamson, it just all sat there. Yeah. So I'd lost all that band definition, which I never got back, to be honest. 